Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the full motherboard water block that Bits Power has made for the um, Asus Maximus 6 Impact. Now the Impact is their ITX board, which if I magic it in, just call me Paul Daniels. Um, it's only 170 mil square, so there's not really enough room on this board to be able to have a CPU water block, chipset uh, water block, and then MOSFET um, coolers as well. Because so, and the amount of space in here to have you know loads of different um, hoses and everything going in, it just wouldn't look nice. It looked horrible. It looked too busy. It's pointless. So Bits Power have made a full motherboard water block which essentially goes on and it calls the chipset, the CPU, these two chips here and the power regulators as well because the uh, impact has the raised power regulator area at the top here, there's a big heat sink on it you can see it all behind and it calls these two chips here, here, ha and that's the Nuvaton one and the Republic of Gamers one and then it calls the Z87 chipset as well and the good thing about it being a full motherboard block is there's a, only one input and output so that means you've only got two hoses going into this so if you're not cooling your graphics card you've got two hoses if you do call your graphics card it's going to go in out straight in the graphics card and then from your graphics card it's going to go back out to your pump and res or your radiator again um, so it just keeps all of your hosing down to an absolute minimum. As far as hosing is concerned, it's just like having your CPU block. But you've obviously got it uh, all being called, which, you know, it can never be a bad thing. Um, and also, it does mean if you're running uh, your radiators with really low fans, because I'm assuming if you've got an ITX uh, motherboard, you're going to be running a relatively small case. If you've got your fans down low, by having them water-cooled with this, it means that your chipset and your VRMs are not going to be getting up to extortionate um, temperatures because they're not being actively cooled by a gallon of airflow. <sighs> right, so that's that. So uh, essentially, the Bits Power block does come with all the fittings that you need to do it. It does come with some thermal paste as well, although today I will be using uh, MX4. Uh, I generally use MX4 or Noctua MTH1 and I kind of flip between the two, it doesn't really make any difference. I get this because uh, it's a 20 gram tube and it lasts me a little bit longer, uh, but Noctua are kind enough to send me um, drawers full of MTH1, so that's another reason why I use that, but it is a very good thermal paste, both of them are. Um, so that's the thermal paste that we're going to be using today. You're going to want some scissors later on for the thermal pads because we have thermal pads to fit on the two chips and the VRM heat sinks. Uh, the thermal paste we put on the CPU and the uh, chipset. And then I've got two different uh, Phillips screwdrivers. I've got a large uh, magnetic Phillips, which are what I call my magic magnetic, because this is my trusty one. You can actually see that it's quite shiny, and that's because of all the use it's had. It was dull and kind of matte when I first got it, but my hands have polished it clean. Uh, and then I've got a smaller one as well, just in case. I've got some other tools behind me, but if I need to grab anything, I will tell you as we go along. And then I've obviously got the uh, CPU that we need to fit in the, um, uh, the motherboard. But we're going to go through this in stages. Now, I will say, right from the very beginning, I do have instructions, which you will get with yours as well. And I will be fo following these. And I will, uh, I will do my very best. Um, to uh, help you know guide you through Hang on, let me go and get the door I'm back right sorry for the interruption it was uh, just a delivery I get loads of those they always seem to pick the most awkward times anyway so I'm going to try and guide you as best I possibly can now I've not done this before so I may make mistakes but we will see and then hopefully if I make the mistakes and are on camera it will stop you making the same ones because I'll be warning you not to do you know what not to do and what to do so, I'm um, also, the tripod is in the middle here, but I'm sat over this side, so I'm going to be hugging my tripod and stuff. So if you can see it getting knocked, I'm sorry, uh, but it's just really awkward for me to have the camera right in front of me, so I can actually do this for you. What we're going to do, we're going to push the um, water block out the way for the minute, and we will get the motherboard ready. Now I'm going to put it down on the table move everything out of shot because we want to at least try and make this look professional don't we children 
I'll zoom you in a little bit and like I said I'll try my best not to uh, jolt everything. Now I know we need to take this heat sink off so what we're going to do is we're going to, I think I'm going to try the small screwdriver. Now this heat sink you do need to keep I will say and uh, it is really difficult trying to do this so that you can see but I will try. Right so don't forget to keep your screws. Now if I'm just going to say to Jay, can you get me a um, roll of sellotape please Jay? Now you're probably thinking he's going to sellotape the um, screws. You know, put a bit of sellotape out and put the screws down. But I'm not. What you do is you put a bit of sellotape on your desk like that and then when you get your screws you drop them inside the sellotape. You can still see it there. But the thing is, is when you move your sellotape on the desk, you can move it out of the way and it's gone. And when you bring it back, the screw's still in there. Now it may sound real simple, but that's just something that I've done loads over the years, so that might help you. So we'll do that. And you know that's off out of shot and that's where the screws are going now. All right, so we've removed the two screws from the back of the heat sink. I should really be quiet when I'm doing this because if I talk right the way through this I'm not going to be able to do the super speedy speedy duck bit. Now there's two more screws at the edges, there's one there and there's one there and you undo those and there are, there's bolts around the back of the board as well so we're going to need to hold on to the board and onto the magic magnetic now. Now I'm just pressing with my finger on that bolt We'll undo this. Now hopefully, there we go, look, that's why I call it magic magnetic. Because it's magic and it's magnetic. So we put that away. We've got the bolt off the back, the nut rather, that goes off the one side as well. I'm going to do the same on this one. Finger on the back. Unscrew. That's that off. Right, so we're going to put that down, and then uh, this back plate, I'm assuming, should come off with a bit of, there we go. Now, you can see that that's got some thermal pad back there. Save that thermal pad, because you're going to be reusing the back plate bit. So we're going to put that back on there, give it a bit of a push. So we're going to keep that, because this is going to get reused on the other one. So we now put this to one side in a safe place. Don't forget where you put it, children. Um, now, the other um, heat sink, it should come off with a bit of a bit of persuasion. Now, you can see that that's got a thermal pad on the back. But the, uh, the air water block, the air water block, <laughs> the air block, you're going to have a thin bit of thermal pad on that, and you're going to have a larger bit across all the gold bits as well. So if I so bring that up, I know it's real difficult to show you, but you're going to have some on along there and then some along the uh, gold bits as well. So both of those are going to get water cooled. Now we can flip this round and we know that these two screws need to come out because they're from the uh, back of the chipset heatsink. So we're going to buzz these out. Now my little screwdriver isn't magnetic so I need to do some one handed wizardry as I'm doing this. And uh, this little thing on the end, in case you're wondering, spins. So when it's in my hand and I'm spinning the screwdriver around, I'm still pushing on the screwdriver with my hand, but I can move it like that, see? And that's what they're for. And it's so that idiots like me can do this type of stuff one-handed. Now you know. ta -da! Right. So, enough of my Darren Brown hand magic. We're going to remove this heat sink now. That had a thermal pad on it, but we will be, well we're not going to be using this, this would make a lovely key ring. Um, we're going to be using a tiny bit of thermal paste on that, but we need to put thermal pads on this and this and then on these uh, two bits on the power regulator board. But first things first, we need to put a CPU in. So I'm just going to show you something. Now this is how I do my CPUs because obviously the um, the CPU socket area, a lot of people kind of get all like funny about it and you know risking 
bent pins and all that kind of jazz now. I'm trying to do this while I'm hugging the doodah. So that's at the top. So we put our CPU in. So CPU's in there like that. And then, stupid as it sounds, put the CPU in and then when that goes and you clip that in, that magically comes off. So essentially you've never had to take this off. The only time that you're risking bent pins is when the CPU goes in, um, but it just stops. I don't know, it's just a little habit that I've got in when I've been doing stuff, but God, look, Darren Brown magic again. Right, so now we need to start thinking about thermal pads. So, da -da, da -da. I don't know how to go about this yet because effectively what we need to do, we have two lots of thermal pads. Now, this bit, will need to go on there, but we'll cut it down. And this bit needs to go up on the uh, larger section, up on the top of there. But I don't know whether I'm going to put the thermal pads on there directly, or if I'm gonna put the thermal pads up on the, the heat sink first. If we put it up on the heat sink first, what I'll need to do is get a rough idea where it's gonna go. And I think, personally, I reckon, and what I'm looking at, I think it's going to be better if I have it on the heat sink, slide it in, and then, yeah, I think that's going to be the best idea. Right, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm literally, I'm just eyeing everything up, because like I said, I've not done this before, but I don't think it's going to take us too long, children. So, what we'll do is I'm going to get the thermal pads ready for up the top. Now I know I need to cut these down. I'm just going to check. Let's have a look. Yeah, it needs to go on the black ones, so it doesn't need to go on these two on the end. So I'll just show you, just so I can show you what I was looking for. It needs to go on these black MOSFETs up here. But these two ones on the end, you don't need to worry about. And then you need to put it on the gold ones up there as well so let's have a look uh, I'm gonna cut it just over halfway or at least I'm going to try and cut it just over halfway right so I've probably cut it two-thirds and one-third there, as you can see. Now, we know that the thicker bit is the lower one, and we know that the smaller bit is the higher one, so that's all right. And then what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a rough idea for that. So we're gonna go with that big. So I'm trying to do this so you can see it. We keep going around the chipset, uh, chipset, the tripod. Right, and I'll mirror that. Okay, right. So that little bit is just a bit of waste. But I'm going to take the plastic. Now, uh, on the thermal pads, there's plastic on both sides. You've got a skinny bit, which has got like a texture to it, and then there's a thick bit as well. So that's the skinny bit, and I'm just going to put that to one side out of the way, and then there's a, there's a... That's it taken off. So we're going to put that over that contact point. That's just gone over the uh, Asus uh, Republic of Gamers one, and then I'm going to do, do. I'm just trying to take the little one off. I keep looking up to make sure that I'm in shot for you. Come on! Right, there we go. I've got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Right. So there's that, it's off. It's almost like taking a girl's bra off. I've got pretty but But I can understand some of you nerds struggle. There's not really ways online that you can practice, is there? <laughs> right. So, cut the off. Right. So we've got the uh, thermal pads put on there and there. So essentially now what we need to do is get the thermal pads ready for that. And then we need to put some thermal paste on the two um, thermal paste points, which is the chipset and the CPU. We're going to get the thermal pads put on here first. 
and there's no way I can really stand that up so I'm just going to put it that way and I'll try and do my best to show you. Again you need to make sure you take the plastic off. Please remember to take both bits of plastic off. Back in the days when I used to build rigs for a living I used to quite often I'd get people sending me graphics cards which they were having problems with they'd fitted water blocks to and then they'd send me their graphics cards to fit the water blocks for them again and you'd be amazed how many times I got to these bits on their fitting and they hadn't taken the plastic off of one of them now right so push that in right, I've got a little bit hanging over so I'm going to break that off so we've got a thermal pad on that one, round this side, I'm just going to just quickly make sure, yeah we're good, All right, so then we need to put some thermal pad up there, oh, 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 oh. I'm getting to see, look, practice makes perfect, it is like a brass strap. Right, so now I know we need to put this on here and it's really not the easiest stuff to get on and that's just, that's about as straight as um, Graham Norton. So I'm going to give it another go. It's not helping that it's sticking to my nails, but anyway, right. Please go on. I'm just trying to get this on as best as I can. Now I've got a little uh, flat edge screwdriver here and I'm just going to, as strange as it sounds, use this as like a little trimmer just to pull a bit off the end because I know we're clear on that end so that's alright. Right, so that's that sorted and then I'm just going to line stuff up. And this is what I was saying to you about um, making mistakes. What I've done, and I'm not going to edit this out, so don't mind admitting it, I've put the thermal pad up there, which is actually going to come into contact with these caps. But it needs to go in contact with the black sections. So we need to move it down to the part that sticks out. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Dum, 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 dum. Now, is that going to come into contact with all of it? Let me have a ganders. It is, so we're good. Right, so boys and girls, I just need to uh, 
see what you can see again right so you need to have it on that lower bit and then the pokey out bit don't make the mistake that i did and put it on the top it's just me not paying attention but i've worked it out before i've built it which is the best thing um and then uh yeah we've obviously rectified it now the caps aren't really going to get hot anyway and it doesn't say that we need to worry about putting anything on the caps or anything like that also if you have a look like i said about those two things at the end they're not colored in so we know that's where the we don't need to worry about putting thermal pads on them so we need to put a bit of thermal paste on now now the problem when we put the cpu on is it is going to be really difficult to get a what i would call a uh, if we put a blob on like that it's probably going to get smeared all over the place so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my little spreader out the drawer um so that i'm going to i'm going to pre-spread the thermal paste before i put it on because i don't know how well it's going to end up on the um so i'm just I'm just going through my drawer i've got my spreader i don't even know what thermal paste this come with but it's a lifesaver when you actually need one. You can use a credit card or a bank card or whatever if you if you need to. Just try and get a roughly even spread. Now like I said, you can try the blob method if you want, but if it doesn't work out and your temperatures are massively uneven over the cores, then you may have to take it all apart test it out again so I'm gonna go with it this way just to stop me worrying what's it gonna spread the chipset now I'm doing that a bit roughly just so there's a bit extra on now I'm gonna get the fittings but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the block as we did before trying to keep it off the CPU so I'm fitting it into the top first trying to keep it off that CPU and then sliding it down and pushing it on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the box back in and badly so and if I look, I'm right up by the camera with you now. So you can see the CPU bolts there. Let me see. Can you see right? You can see CPU bolts there. But we've also got bolts up the top here, and that's what I'm going to fit first to try and stop it from moving around. Um, so. In fact, I'm going to do it that way. So we bring the back plate back in again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the screws in. Oh. E bag gone. Let me see if I can find the screws. Like I said, I'm trying to do this all live on the camera, which is probably not the best thing I could have done. Don't think those Asus screws are compatible with the block so we know that don't use the ASA screws and now with one hand I need to and just to take the piss her Allen crew right so they're Allen keys. 
again I should have looked at the instructions so it's my own fault but like I said children rather than editing all this stuff out like a lot of people would have done you can just go through the uh, processes that my brain goes through with me right so we've got that screwed in now we do need to put those um, two on as well the uh, nuts and bolts that we said about before so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it through I'm going to get the nut I'm going to spin it on What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do those up finger tight for the minute and that's but I'll come back to them once we've finished fitting the rest of the block and do them up right, and now we put the, that down now the rest of the screws they do need to have plastic um, washers put on. Now I'm going to do the chipset end first because it's the far end and I'm squeezing everything up onto that power regulator area. Put that back down. Just getting one of these plastic screws because they stick to the desk rather lovely. So I'm just going to do these up. Now I know a lot of you are saying at the moment are you undoing it? I am. I'm just getting the getting it sat in the thread right. I'm going to uh, put it down. I should have got my own 2.5 mil Allen key out. I'll use this one where it's here. Right, so then I'm um, nipped up. Then we've got four more screws to go around the CPU area, which we need to put more washers on. Drop that into place. Keep standing up, sitting down, standing up, sitting down. Right, so that's that one done. That's that one started. Now they, uh, there are two washers there, which we could have used for the back if we wanted, but it didn't say to in the manual you've got spares I suppose if you lose them as well they are so tiny and fiddly right so 
like car wheels we're going to go opposites and I'm going to nip them up to start off with I'll go back round and give them a bit of a pinch Give the chips that one a pinch. Actually that one's stuck out quite far. So I'm going to go round a few more times with that one. It wasn't done right up in. It is now. Same with this one. That one's nice and tight. Now we need know we need to do these bolts up as well. As I said at the beginning we need to do those up. So we go back and Give them a little pinch, because that's just to um, fix the back plate in. But -da, this is the block mounted. Um, so we've got some heat sinks left over, the stock motherboard stuff left over. But there we have it, boys and girls. I actually quite like the look of this as well. It's quite a funky little thing. You can see it all fitted on there. You can see now what I was saying to you about those capacitors. The thermal pad was never that thick as that gap, but we know we've got it in the right place. So do pay attention. You might have made the same mistake if you hadn't watched my video. Who knows? But there we go, it's on there, fitted. Obviously you've got room, still got room to get your RAM in. And the RAM clippy clippy end is that end. Which is quite handy, if it had been at the other end then it would have been massively uh, hindered. Lovely large uh, fin plate area there. You can see my fingerprints on this, but a little bit of a buff with some kitchen roll or something. And you'll be fine. But there we have it. Let's bring this box back in. Stand it back up on the Asus box and there we go. Lovely, bubbly. Can I get it in? Oh yeah, look at that. All right, so there we have it. Full motherboard water block fitted to the Asus Maximus Impact. Uh, I can see, what is it? Yeah, it's taken us half an hour to do that, which, yeah, fair enough, but I filmed it all live. Probably take you the same amount of time, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but at least you've got a good guide there. You can see there was a couple of areas that I might have made mistakes, but we worked through process of double checking everything, and that's the thing that I cannot stress enough, is double checking each time you, you, know, you try something to put it on. Because if I hadn't have kept doing that, I might have fit that top bit wrong. So that's all um, uh, well and good. We know about that. But there we go. All fitted, lovely, ready to drop into your uh, ITX case. And then... Uh, Obviously you're going to need some barbs and stuff, you can either use um, just normal barbs straight out of the top or obviously you can get uh, 45 degree and um, 90 degree angled fittings and you can do whatever's best to make your loop tidy. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan that has just live fitted uh, the Bits Power Impact water block onto, funnily enough, the Asus Maximus 6 Impact. But for now at least, it's Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you, out.